Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. My name is Aditya and on this channel I talk about Kubernetes, blockchain and software in general. And in today's video we are going to take a look how we can set up IPFS cluster onto the Kubernetes cluster. So this is going to be a private IPFS cluster where we will be using the IPFS cluster service to set up the IPFS cluster. And if you are coming to this video for the first time then I would highly recommend you to watch the entire playlist where I have showed you how to set up the IPFS cluster onto the virtual machines and how you can run it on the Docker as well. So without any further ado, let's start the video. So if you see my screen here, I'll be using the official documentation provided by the IPFS cluster and we will be setting up the IPFS cluster with the help of this doc. And I have modified certain files in this tutorial because the scripts that were given in the official docs, they were not working. So if you see this screen, uh, we are into this page which is which says running cluster on the Kubernetes and I'll give the link to this documentation into the de video description. And here you can see we have to first create some Kubernetes secrets and these are the cluster secret that we will be creating and we will be also creating in the peer IDs as well. So in our setup we will have three nodes where the first node will act as a master and the other two nodes will be joining that IPFS cluster service. So if you go here we have to first create a secret and we have to provide the cluster secret here. So for, to generate the cluster secret we can just simply run this command and this will generate a cluster secret for us. So let's copy this command and I'll go back to my ID and uh, here you can see some files are already present. I'll just walk you through all of these files. But for now, let's uh, let's run this command which is going to give us the cluster secret. So I'll run this command and this has given me a cluster secret. I'll just simply copy it and I have already created this file. So this file is here where I have to give the secret so i'll just simply put the secret here and now let's go back and now we have to generate the peer id and the private key so to generate this we need a ipfs key program and this key program you can find from this link where i have created this uh, binary and you can just simply download this binary and start using it so you can just simply go to this link to this repo which is ipfs key and if you go to release this section you will be able to see how you can simply download the binary from here. So in my case, I am running this on Linux and which is AMD 64 architecture. So I'll copy the link here and I can simply do a wget here. And this will download in my local file system and I can simply just untar this. and I can just give the file name. Now it has downloaded or extracted that thing and now I can just simply move this binary to my path variable so that I can access it from anywhere. So I'll just do sudo mv and I can just move it to slash user slash local and bin. And once this is there, I can simply try to see if this is installed or not. So I can just do IPFS and yes, it says that it is installed. Now uh, we can, I can just simply remove the other files which are not needed to me. I can just simply remove them. Okay, so now we can just go back to the official docs and we can just generate the peer ID and the private key. So I'll just copy this command. Let's run it here. And it has generated the ID and the private key. So this is the peer ID. I'll just simply copy it. And for peer ID, we have to create a config map. So I have created a config map here. And the name of the config map is env config. And here you can give the peer ID. And by the way, this is the peer ID uh, for the node one. So first node will have this peer ID and remaining nodes will generate their own peer IDs. So I'll put it here. And now we can just put the private key here. So, but before putting up the private key directly here, we have to just encode this into base64 format and then we can put it here. So if you go to the official docs here as well, it says that you have to encode it into base64 format and then you can simply put it. So I'll just encode it. I'll just do simply echo and let's put it here simply copy this thing and let's put it here and after that I can just simply do a base64 
end quote. Okay, so you can see we got the base 64 encoded value and let's copy it and let's put it here. So again, this is the private key. Uh, that's why it's, uh, we are storing this in the form of Kubernetes secret. Uh, but for information which is uh, which can be accessed or which can be shared publicly, we have created a config map. So in our secret, we are just going to store cluster secret and the bootstrap peer private key. So this is the private key for the bootstrap peer. And we are going to have one bootstrap peer and removing uh, other peer nodes are going to join that bootstrap peer. Now we can simply clear this out and let's see the next steps that we have to do. So we have created this config map, uh, the secret, which has both the values, the cluster secret and the peer private key. Now we can simply define the stateful set and in the stateful set we are going to have three replicas which means that we'll have three instances and one instance is going to act as a bootstrap node and the remaining two are going to join that bootstrap node so uh, one thing just i want to show you is is that we will have a init container section as well in the stateful set which is going to configure the nodes as per their role so first node will going to be the uh, it's going to act as a bootstrap node. So for that, we'll have a separate script, but the other node is going to have uh, the, the, the normal role or the joining role. So we'll have, we'll have a different script for that. So now let's go to the uh, stateful set. And by the way, like this stateful set was not working on my, uh, on my site. So I, I, I modified the stateful set. And if we go to uh, this file, uh, which is IPFS cluster. So here, if I scroll down, you can see that it has three containers. One is the init container and another two are the normal container. So the first, the name of the init container is configure IPFS. And this is running some command, which is custom configure IPFS.sh. And the script is mounted as a in the form of config map. So if you see here in the volume section, there is a uh, volume with name configure script that we are using here and this is coming from uh, this config map so we'll have a config map with name ipfs cluster set bootstrap config let's go ahead and see this config map so if you go to this first file which is bootstrap script cm here you can see that this is a config map and the name of the config map is same which is ipfs cluster set bootstrap config and this has two files so first is the entry point.sh and second one is the configure ipfs.sh let's go ahead and see uh, how we are using these files. So if we go to this IPFS cluster and in the init container, we can see that it's using configure IPFS.sh file. Let's go ahead and see this script. So it's using this configure IPFS.sh and in the script, what we are doing is we are just making the uh, a directory where we can store the IPFS data. And then we are setting the user as IPFS and then we are doing some initialization. So we are just initializing the addresses. And if you look here carefully, we are just setting us the I addresses on zero, the listen address on 0.0.0, .0 instead of 127.0.0.1 because we want to make it accessible through any of the instances, right? And we have, we have set up some uh, other configurations as well here. And now let's go back to the IPFS cluster. And now let's go to the other container let's go to the first container. So this is the actual IPFS node and this is the Kubo node. This is the IPFS Kubo node. And if you see here, uh, it's going to run as is like the normally, but there is one more container uh, which is running as a sidecar, which is the IPFS cluster. And this container is there to ensure the that we are running in the, uh, services in the clustered mode. And this container is running this script called entry point.sh. Let's go ahead and see this script. So this was the script, which is entry point.sh. And what we are doing here is first, we are just ensuring that if the, if the cluster is already initialized, so if it is initialized, which means that we'll have a file called service.json. If the file is not there, then go ahead and initialize it. But if it is initialized, then we are just simply going to update certain values from that service.json file. And what we are going to update is we are just going to change the listen addresses uh, to 0.0.0. .0. So you can see here, thus we are just doing a uh, replace with the help of set command. And you can see that we are just replacing this uh, address with 0.0.0. .0 .0. Now, after that, 
we are just starting up the IPFS service, right? And uh, if it is a if it is a first peer, then we are just going to start the service. But if it if these are the other peers, then we are just going to join that to the bootstrap peer. So if you see here, if that is the first peer, uh, then it's going to start normally. But if these are the other peers, then they are going to simply join that or bootstrap with the help of the first peer. So if you, you can see that we are bootstrapping with the help of bootstrap address. Now this, the change that I was talking about that I had to make certain changes in the script because uh, the, the, the script that is given in the docs that was not working for me. So here you can see that I am in the DNS part. I have just given the service name and then I have given the zero, which means that the first pod uh, because it's a stateful set. So we'll have all the three instances in the form of IPFS cluster hyphen zero, IPFS cluster hyphen one, IPFS, IPFS cluster hyphen two. So for, we are making the first instance as the bootstrap node. And if you see here, I have to just give the service name here as, again after dot because it was not working initially for me. So I have to give the service name after the dot. Like I have to give the full DNS for that. Now uh, this was it in this script file. Now let's go ahead and uh, uh, see uh, how we are mounting up those secrets. So if you see here, uh, we are just mounting up the environment variable and this bootstrap peer ID is present in this env config, which is a config map and the key was bootstrap peer ID. Let's go ahead and see it. So if you see this config map, uh, the config map name was env config and the date and the key was bootstrap peer ID. So same we are mounting up here as well in the form of environment variable. Now we are again mounting one another uh, variable, which is, which is bootstrap uh, peer private key. And you can see that this is coming from the secret, not from the config map. And this coming from the, the name of the secret is secret config. We can verify it here that the name is secret config. And this is the key, which is uh, mounting up there. Now the other key that we are mounting is cluster secret. And this is again coming from the uh, same secret, which is secret config. And the key name was there cluster secret. We can just go ahead and verify it here. Now we are exposing some of the ports so that we can just test the connectivity and uh, we are just mounting up that script so that the script can be consumed by the, the when the init container is running or when the IPFS cluster container is starting up, they need those scripts. Now since it's a stateful set, so we have to configure the volume claim templates as well. And uh, uh, so we have we, ha we are defining two volumes here first is for the ipfs cluster storage and second one is for the ipfs node now i i'm giving the storage class as do block storage because in my case i'm running this on the digital ocean and the cluster that i have that has a storage class called do block storage now let's see the final file which is the ipfs service and this is a ipfs service it's a load balancer service that i have created i have created as a load balancer so that I can just do some curl commands and verify if the things are working or not. And these are some of the ports that I have exposed here. Okay, so now let's start deploying these services onto the Kubernetes cluster. So I'll open my terminal here and I have already configured my kube config. So if I do k get pods, you'll be able to see that there is no pod here. And what I'll do, I'll just simply apply whatever is there in this current directory. And this should go ahead and create all the secrets, the config map and the stateful set as well. So let's see the secrets. And you can see it created a secret. Let's see the config map as well. It has created the config map, two config map. One is the env config and another one is the IPFS cluster set bootstrap config. This has the those two scripts. Now let's see the stateful set if it is created or not. So it's still in creation phase. Let's see the pod. Okay, so let's wait uh, for them to get grid. And meanwhile, what we can do is we can see the start seeing the log of uh, this particular node or this particular pod. So I can just do k get log. Just put the service name or the pod name. And we can see we got the log, but this is the log of the IPFS a node itself. Let's see the log of IPFS cluster pod. Let's try to see the logs again. So if I do k logs IPFS hyphen cluster one, and let's see the log of IPFS cluster. So we should be able to see if it has identified the other peers or not. So here we can see 
that it has identified the other peers and these are the addresses of the third peer and this is the address of the first peer or the id and let's see the log of other cluster instance which is the ipfs cluster 2 and uh, we should also see similar kind of a response here so this looks good to me now let's see if the kubernetes service is created or not which is a lb or load balancer service for us and we can see the service here we can just verify all the peers if they have joined the cluster or not we can just do a curl command so i'll do a curl and i can just give the ip address and we have to give the port which is uh, 9094 I guess and let's give the peers so here we can see we got some response let's do uh, let's pipe the response to JQ so that we can see in a well formatted JSON and uh, here we can see if we start seeing up the, let's let's do one thing let's dump this uh, response into some file and I can say data dot JSON. Let's see if we have the okay. We don't get the response here. Let me do one thing. I'll just copy the response, and we I can just put it into some file. Let's copy it and put it here. And now let's try to read this response. So this command should ideally show us all the peers that are there in this IPFS cluster. And we can see that uh, these are the those peers that are available here. This, these are the cluster peers. We can see the ID of all the three peers. And these are the unique identities. And if you see this thing, this is the ID of the bootstrap peer. And this must be the ID of one of the peer, right? And uh, if we scroll down, we should be able to see the similar response for the uh, other peers as well so it's an array which means that we have received we should have received the third three instances so if you see this was the response or, or this is the details of the cluster uh, peer one and this is the response of the cluster peer two and somewhere there should be the response of cluster peer zero as well so you can see there is a response of cluster uh, node zero and you can see that they all have three peers which means that they all have joined the same network so if you see here for cluster node one you can see that it also has three peers and for cluster one it has again three peers right so we're successfully able to create the ipfs cluster with the help of ipfs cluster service and we verified it as well with the help of that curl command which shows us the response of all the all the peers that are there in the system and all the links are given in the video description so this was it for this video hope you like this video and if you did like this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one